today's era of nanotechnology was born out of creation of electron microscopes that could see down to the level of individual atoms. Once we could see at that level, we could pull out tweezers, if you will, and pluck around atoms, move them around, and create things we had never been able to at least see before. Mankind has had a dramatically increased ability to fabricate on the nanoscale, and this is opening expanded worlds. The most interesting work going on in this university in nanotechnology is related to artificial muscles. Professor Ray Bachman and his team have developed a muscle made out of nanoscale material, nanotubes, that will actually work very much like a human muscle. Carbon nanotubes are extremely small cylinders of carbon that have a diameter which is only about one thousandth the diameter of a human hair. They are superior in strength. They're superior in the ability to conduct electricity, to conduct heat. The carbon nanotubes act to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy or chemical energy to mechanical energy. To think most simplistically about what is occurring, we're injecting electrons into carbon nanotubes. These electrons, they actually cause the carbon nanotubes to expand. And this expansion provides one part of the operation of the artificial muscles. One of the most important applications, I believe, is, is prosthetic limbs. If you look at today's limbs, they mechanically look very similar to ones that were used at the time of the Civil War. These present artificial limbs do not enable a person to function as he would with a real limb. Important features of natural muscles can be captured by our artificial muscles. In the future, there's a possibility for our carbon nanotube artificial muscles to be even much stronger. And the challenge here is how do you assemble trillions of carbon nanotubes to make yarns and sheets and doing it in such a way that you don't lose the properties of the individual carbon nanotubes. The yeah, artificial muscle is a very beautiful application, but my group, we work on different aspects of nanotubes. There are many other forms of energy which we need in a better way than it is produced now. And the best example is electricity. What is that, what stuka? Anvar Zakidov is developing exciting new technologies that enable harvesting of solar energy. We would like to have clean electricity, which will not spoil the nature with CO2 production. And that is converting the solar light into electricity. These days, it is done by so-called solar panels made of silicon. They are not very efficient. They need a lot of energy. They occupy too much space. Nanotubes can be combined together in a new type of solar cells. And in those solar cells, the energy will be converted very similar to the way as the leaves of plants convert the solar energy and grow and create biomass. And the role of nanotubes is collect the charge. Also, a reverse process where Electrical energy is converted to visible light in unusual types of displays and lamps. First of all, they will not need the bulb. It will be just a film. No hazardous materials inside. Maybe we can put the nanotubes on the walls, attach wires, and then the whole wall will be your lamp. Nanotubes are the dream material. We'll be able to make fibers, films, which will be used in everyday life from material which is 100 times better and unique compared to what we have now. But I think some of the most interesting applications of nanoelectronics that are still out there a bit in the future are in the biomedical arena. Nanoparticles that will attach themselves to individual cancer cells and then reveal themselves through scanning technology will enable us to identify cancers far sooner than we have ever been able to identify them before. We will be able to make little nano submarines that will go swimming around inside our blood vessels and clean out clots, open up arteries maybe even finding ways of creating organic materials that are computers or that engage in activities that we can only dream of today.